Olá, meus amigos. Hello, my friends. May God bless you all and bless you indeed, just as He promised. Because He promises, He has promised to bless those who seek Him. For He said that those who seek Me will find Me. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart or with all of your soul. And I would like you to know, my dear friend, the, for the sake of the truth and for your own sake, I'm going to disable the comments here so it doesn't draw attention um, and distract you from what really matters. Jesus said like this, pay attention, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, isn't it? Jesus said that, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, which means that what sets human beings free is the truth. But when the person gets to know the truth, as long as they don't know the truth, then they don't know who the truth is, and then they are not set free. Yes or no? Pay attention. Isn't it what it says? That's what I conclude here, that when the person knows the truth, they are delivered. And when they are delivered, they are happy, they are joyful, they glow. And this is what happened with Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, after she fell pregnant, right? In her old age, she got pregnant. And she had even more faith than Sarah because Abraham's wife didn't have the patience to wait God's answer. But Elizabeth and her husband, they were already old. For sure, they had been praying for a long time. And I believe, I personally believe, it's not written here, but I believe that Zacharias and her had even stopped praying. Why? Because they were already elderly. Time had gone by already, a very long time had gone by. So they got tired or they kept quiet. However, this is very nice, very nice. It's very nice because here the holy text says that Zacharias, when he entered there on the sanctuary, he went before the altar of incense. He was a high priest, and Gabriel, the angel, appeared to him on the right side of the altar. And when Zacharias saw the angel, he was troubled. But the angel said to him, don't be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. Your prayer is heard, and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. So, when you think with me, think with me, my friend. Place yourself in the position of Zacharias or Elizabeth. You've been praying, crying out, talking to God. You've done everything. You've made huge efforts already. But God's answers haven't yet come. A year has gone by, two, three, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I ask you, how many years Zacharias and his wife were praying to have a child? I think that tens of tens of years. However, the day that the angel appeared to him and said, Zacharias, do not be afraid, for your prayer is heard. Your prayer has been heard. But when was it heard? Ah, uh, God had heard Zacharias and Elizabeth's prayer a long time ago, since the beginning when they first prayed. However, time 
time wasn't capable of impeding them from being set free from that fear, from that dread, from that shame. Because back then, a woman who couldn't conceive was a shame for her family. But when Gabriel said to him, appeared and said, listen, your prayer is heard. Look how wonderful. So you can imagine the joy, the joy, the rejoicing. You can imagine the greatness of the joy that Zacharias and Elizabeth felt in that day, the day they found out that she was going to bear a child. Well, the same thing happened with Mary. When Mary, who was a young lady who feared God, who had a very good behavior, who was pure, she was a young lady. I believe she was around 16 years old at the time, somewhere there. And the day she was visited by the same angel, uh, angel Gabriel, then Mary was full of joy. She rejoiced in the Lord because she got to know a truth that had come from God, not truth from man, not the truth of the world, the truths of this world, but godly truth. The world lives in lies. The world we live in is a world of deceit, of trickery, of illusion. is a world of fantasies. And the truth, the truth is that the world, human beings live a world of deceit led by their feelings, deceived. And that's why they suffer, they groan because they see so many things which are apparently beautiful, wonderful on the outside, but they can't have those things because of their financial condition. But when the truth comes upon that person, when that person gets to know the truth that comes from God, not from man, not from religion, but from God himself. When the truth comes from God, comes from above, as the Holy Spirit does, then the person is set free from the lies, the deceits, the illusions of this world, the opinions of this world. They are free. And once their soul is free, then they rejoice. They rejoice greatly. And this is what it means to be free. If you, my friend, are a hostage, you are a hostage of the circumstances, the problems, the situations around you, dreams that didn't come true yet. You who are there, sad, depressed, downcast, because you are not free yet. You haven't been set free. The day that you receive the Holy Spirit, the day that the Spirit of God comes over you, that's it. You will be free from everything that is tying you down, all these futile thoughts and useless feelings that the world passes on to us or that tries to deceive us with all these feelings, all these opinions, all these dreams, these nonsense dreams, because any dream that you may have, any dream we have concerning the things of this world are nonsense, because we may even get them to come true when they do come true, but still what happens? It's for a while. But when the person gets to know the truth, which is the Holy Spirit, who is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. The Lord Jesus is the truth. So, he may not appear to us physically as the angel appeared physically to Elizabeth and Mary. 
However, he appears through the Holy Spirit. And when he comes upon us, then that's it. Then we are no longer attached to anything, to anything from this world. We are no longer attached to people. We are no longer depending on anybody. When he comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he removes all of your foolish opinions and thoughts and, and limited dreams that are useless, and he fills you with joy. You rejoice as Mary did, as Elizabeth did, as Zacharias did, and the person then is free. Jesus is saying here, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. As long as the person doesn't know the truth, they will not be free. You can speak to the pastor, the bishop, the priest, the archbishop, the pope. You can speak with whoever you want, but your problem will only be resolved, do you know when? When you get to know the truth, when you get to know the Holy Spirit, do you want to resolve your problem? Whatever your problem is, whether it's in your love life, in your health, your finances, your spiritual problems, whatever your problem may be, whatever this problem is, infirmities, whatever your problem is, when you receive the Holy Spirit, it's Jesus. The Holy Spirit is Jesus himself in spirit. He comes down and enters us and he dwells inside of us from then on and his dwelling inside of us makes us a fountain of everlasting life and that's what we are trying to pass on to people the problem with people nowadays is inside of them because of their personal opinions their vain ways of being, the personal decisions, desires, and lusts, which are all passing. You can fulfill any dream in life. However, if you don't know the truth, none of the dreams that you realize or that you have will you ever complete you. When a dream is fulfilled, if it's fulfilled, it ends there. And then you are going to have another dream and another one, and you are going to live from dream to dream, and you are never going to be fulfilled in life, ever. You will only be fulfilled when the Spirit of God comes and make His dwelling inside of you. And one thing that I always think about is the following. When people in the times of Jesus, the disciples, the followers of Jesus, those who received miracles in the times of Jesus, they saw Jesus, they touched Him, they were healed by Him, they had His presence, they would feel secure next to Him. But whenever Jesus would get away to pray and He was alone, then they would also stay alone, they would feel empty. Remember when Jesus was in the boat? There in the boat, Jesus was tired and then fell asleep. He laid his head there and, and he slept. And all of a sudden, the storm came. And what happened to the, to the disciples? They were afraid because of the storm, to the point that they were like, wake up, Master, because we are going to, to sink. There is a storm. We, we are going to die. So they didn't think. They didn't reason because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Because if they reasoned, if they had the Holy Spirit, what would they say? Well, if the boat sinks, Jesus is also here. He's going to sink with us. Come on, if He is God, how is He going to sink? Isn't it? Very well, my friend. The same thing happens nowadays. If you have Jesus only in theory, when the problems come, when the storms come, you are going to be afraid and you are going to try to wake Jesus up. But if you have Jesus in spirit, inside of you, imagine, whatever storm you may face, this storm, if it carries you away, it will carry Jesus as well, who is the Holy Spirit. So, you just have to think a little bit, just reason. That's what we call intelligent faith. Anyway, 
Whatever your problem is, if you get to know the truth, if you know the truth, if you met Jesus, if you know Him, if you know Jesus, not for what is written, but by the personal experience you had with Him, then you are free, you are delivered, you are someone who lives intensively. It doesn't mean that you don't have problems. You have problems. The disciples, the apostles, after Jesus resurrected and ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father, then He sent the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit guided the disciples. The disciples had the Holy Spirit in the day of Pentecost, 120 disciples received the Holy Spirit, and many more afterwards. But still, they were persecuted, they were defamed, they were arrested. Many of them were killed because of the name of Jesus. But still, even in the face of death, they were free, because the freedom that God gives us is internal. It's the freedom of the soul, the freedom of the heart. It's the freedom of mind. You are free. And because Jesus is inside of you, then you are a person indeed happy, despite of the fact that on the outside you face problems. You face problems like everybody else does. But if Jesus is inside of you, which is, if the Spirit of God is dwelling inside of you, then you can be certain, my friend, that you are free, and obviously, you are happy. Only when the Holy Spirit comes into us that we are indeed happy. And then this happiness doesn't depend on money, on wealth, on having a house. It doesn't depend on husband or wife or children, parents. It doesn't depend on anything. You are happy because your essence the essence of your life, of your soul, is free because you met the Son of God. And then you are also a child of God to live and witness to others that Jesus is alive, that He resurrected indeed and in truth. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit clarify this better, better than what we said here. I know I said a lot, but it's because I have such a strong desire that you would receive the Holy Spirit that sometimes we, we insist. If we don't stop, we keep talking. Look, friends, later on tonight, we are going to have the meeting of the soul. As long as your soul is not free, you are not going to be delivered. As long as your soul is not free, it will not be delivered. And how is the soul delivered? When the spirit, the intelligence, gets to know the Word of God. So the knowledge of the Word of God produces faith, which makes the soul free. So, tonight, in any universal church of the kingdom of God, you will have the opportunity to be free and to know the plenitude of the freedom in Christ Jesus. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.